Oh hi, didn't see you there. Welcome back to another Voltage Modular tutorial. In this video, we're going to be exploring the very humble but very powerful sample and hold. Everything I'm going to be doing today can also be done inside of Voltage Nucleus, so if you have that, feel free to follow along as we go. Before we dive into all the nitty gritty details, I wanted to show you the patch we're going to be working on today before and after we introduce Sample and Hold and why this is such a cool module. Right here I have the final patch and if we remove this output and instead just grab an output from the amplifier, this is the patch before we start introducing the filters and Sample and Hold. <laughs> It's really not the most exciting sound in the world, but by introducing some filters and using sample and hold modules to create modulation and then adding a couple delays, we can turn that into this. Which is a lot more exciting and interesting. So the sample and hold module, while being pretty straightforward and basic, can do a whole lot of things and is really useful. So let's break down what a sample and hold module does. Here I have a pretty basic patch with a handful of things, and this is to demonstrate what a sample and hold does and how it works. If we take some noise and feed this into the voltage input of an oscillator, this is going to control the pitch, and if we wire this out, we're going to hear a giant mess of noise. What a sample and hold module does is it reads all that incoming voltage and holds onto a signal for dear life at a stable value until it receives another trigger. The sample and hold module and voltage modular can have an internal trigger or an external trigger, and I'll show you both of those here. So let's take a look at utilizing the sample and hold to hold onto a value. If we change the noise output to go to the input of the sample and hold and wire the output of the sample and hold into the keyboard CV here, we'll adjust the rate to something pretty slow and take a listen. It's reading all that noise data and holding onto a single point of it until it receives another trigger from its internal clock. If we take this same setup here and speed up the clock quite a bit, we can get some pretty kooky sound effects and glitchy weird artifacts. The external trigger input here can accept an external trigger and that way we can set a clock or a step sequencer or something to trigger the sample and hold to then sample and hold a new value. For a basic example, let's take the mini LFO and we'll take the square wave out to act as a clock here. We'll switch this over to external mode and increase the gain and take a listen. As we increase the rate of the LFO, or decrease it, that will change the clock that it's receiving to then hold on to a new value. This also applies to triggers and gates, so if we go up here to the CV outs, let's take the gate output and feed that into the external trigger and up the gain, and as I press different notes on my keyboard, every time I press a note, it will hold a new value. And that's really all there is to a sample and hold module, so let's take this idea and build it out into something a bit more interesting. So here we have my patch, which is kind of a big mess of wires and modules at the moment, but it's actually pretty simple because it's based around a single idea, duplicated out a few times, I added some delay, and away we go. So let's break down the core parts of this patch first. Let's take the output and unwire all of these jacks, that way we can just quickly get an idea of everything that's happening. In this section here, we have the kind of heart of the patch. First, I have a sync divider, which I've talked about in a previous video, but what I'm doing is getting the sync in here from the sync out, and the play goes into the reset. This is synced to eighth notes, so this way the sample and hold stuff is going to be at tempo with my project. The clock out here we'll talk about in just a moment. Next up is the core synthesizer part of this. I have a glide module. This is receiving input from the pitch. I have it on constant mode, and then I have the amount at about five milliseconds or so. This way we get a smooth glide between different notes. The output of this goes into the keyboard CV input of both oscillators. That way both of these have the same amount of glide and movement. You could use two separate glide modules, but that's really up to you. The outputs here are both triangle waves. The second oscillator is an octave up. The first oscillator goes into the input of the amplifier, and then to blend in the second oscillator, this goes into an attenuverter. I'm dropping the volume down and then feeding the output into the amplifier. That's really all there is to the heart of this patch. And then we've got the envelope generator, which provides CV for the amplifier. And if we wire this out, you'll hear just the very basic patch.
So now we're going to integrate a sample and hold to start getting some interesting movement to this patch that's in sync with our tempo. What I added next here is a sample and hold, a glide, and then a filter. That's really all you need for a basic sample and hold filter patch. What I did is take the output of the amplifier to the audio in of the filter. The low pass out would go out. In this case, it's going to a mixer because we're going to have three layers of this, but we'll take it directly out here for the moment. Then for frequency mod one, this is coming from the sample and hold. To get some randomness to this patch, I added a noise generator. This goes into an attenuverter, which we'll discuss here in a moment. The noise generator white noise output goes into the input of this sample and hold. The output goes into a glide. The glide has a amount of about 30 milliseconds. This way we're smoothing out the transition and values. Then the output goes into frequency mod one of the filter and just adjusted the mod amount to taste. The sample and hold here you'll see is on external trigger mode and this is receiving the clock out from the sync divider. So the clock out goes to the external trigger in. I have the trigger source on external and now when I play this it's going to be in sync with my project. With that glide module, you hear that we get that nice smooth effect. If we drop the amount down to zero, you'll hear a much more drastic change in values. It's immediate. Now, the real beauty of this patch is just copying this out and adding a delay. Next up, I added the six input mixer here. I took the low pass out of this filter and fed it into input one, and then the master goes to the output. All I did to duplicate this was highlight these and hold alt, and then I can drag them over, and I've got a whole new set of these. We can delete those as I've already done this. So I've got a sample and hold, a glide, and a filter, and then over here, a sample and hold, a glide, and a filter. For these filters, I use the band pass output and put those into delays with some different times and feedback settings, and that way I can just get a bit more movement and change in this patch. This second set goes into input two of the mixer, and this third set over here goes into input three. To make sure that all the filters aren't doing the exact same thing, I introduced the attenuverter module here. I took the outputs of the white noise and fed it into input one of the attenuverter, and then that goes into the sample and hold here for the second set of filters, and just drop the value down, that way it's not receiving as much noise to choose from. Then I grabbed another output from the noise, and that goes into input two of the attenuverter, I dropped the value down a bit, and hit the invert button, that way it's receiving the opposite signal, or the inverted signal. The output of that goes into the input of this third sample and hold, and then these both have the external trigger mode engaged, receiving the clock from the clock output. For the glides on these, I adjusted the glide value, so this one's about 130 milliseconds, this one is somewhere around 400 milliseconds, and that way they're just kind of moving around and drifting freely. These go into delays that aren't really in sync with the project at all, that way I get this kind of cool free-floating effect with the delays. To finalize this patch, we just need to feed our audio input to our filters, so we're going to go to the output of the amplifier, we'll grab an output and put it in the audio end of the second filter, and then another into the third filter. Now that we've got everything wired up, we can give this a play and take a listen to the final result. Which gives us this really cool, pretty sparkly ARP thing. By feeding this into a nice reverb, I've got just a free reverb called the Dragonfly Reverb here. A really, really big washy reverb that's about 10 seconds. You can get some cool, almost video game type sounds. And I think that wraps things up for this video. The sample and hold module is very, very powerful and has a lot of fun. You can use it to hold any value and then use that for modulation or pitch or both. For more information on Voltage Modular or to pick up a copy for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.